Hi guys, well, it's up and running. Let's take a look at how we got there. Hey guys, and welcome back. So, Junk Box is up and running. Um, so a couple of things happened, um, and that'll come in the next part of the video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the benchmarking, because what'll happen is, see this bit, then you'll see a few things that I had to do to get it working then we'll just go straight into the benchmarks. So number one, all the benchmarks you're going to see including um, temperatures are all done at stock. I haven't overclocked the system yet at all. All the benchmarks are also done at 1080p medium settings because that's why I built this machine to run at 1080p medium settings. Um, and I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. So without further ado, Let's have a look at what I had to do to get this thing running. Hey guys, now <clears throat> you may remember that I said the 7870 was a problem for my build because it wasn't, it was posting but it was causing windows to crash essentially so um, I solved that problem now. So I was at work and I was talking about my problems I had over the weekend and there was a guy selling this um, GTX 1070 6 gigabyte variant and it's a G1 gaming. Um, so he wanted £200 for it, so I said I'd think about it, I went home, did some research um, and I offered him £175, which he accepted. He had two in SLI, so he sold one on eBay and it was an absolute nightmare getting payment and blah blah blah, so I just gave him the cash for this um, and now he's running a 1080 Ti instead. This is perfect for me because the machine that we use for VR currently has a 970 in it. Um, and my girlfriend's been complaining and I've noticed some dips in performance so this should be at least 20% better than it I would have thought based on what I've read about it anyway so this card's going in her machine in the house for VR etc and the 970 is coming out and going into the little arm box but the 970 will require a bit of modding um, I'm probably gonna have to get the angle grinder out either on the case or I'm gonna have to cut down the plastic shroud to get it to fit because when I test fitted it to get the machine to boot, I did notice it was slightly twisted. So I don't really want that to be happening all the time. So um, I'm going to go and put this machine card in her machine, take the 970 out, and then we're going to go from there, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. So I thought, um, you know, while the card's out, the 970, I thought I might as well replace the thermal paste on it because I've had it a few years and I think I've, I haven't done it in a long time. So. Basically you need a screwdriver, I've just got some toilet paper and some isopropyl alcohol, preferably over 75% pure. This is 99.9% .9 pure. Luckily my girlfriend grows mushrooms so she has tons of alcohol. Um, so with most GPUs, it's just a case of removing four screws that hold down the, uh, uh, hold down the block. Um, if you've got a back plate, there might be more. But I would advise you do this. It does make a difference to your thermals. And it will certainly extend the life of your GPU. Now, I haven't had this one apart in a while, so it might be a bit sticky. Maybe. If I can... Oh, no, there we go. So again, be careful of things like this. You know, that's for the LED. And then there's one for the fan, which is down there, which I should be. But I could probably just leave that one on. Oh, come on. Bugger, why is that not one? Doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. That's it, guys. It's your GPU. That's the die. Um, so let's give this a clean, first of all. Now, the important thing with this basically just to get it all off hey guys okay so that's <clears throat> good enough for me there's a little bit left around the edge but I don't really mind about that um, you can use whatever thermal paste you want just make sure it's non-conductive most of them are um, I use Noctua NTH1 I always have I probably always will um, this is non-conductive now things to remember about GPUs is like this entire thing is the die so on a cpu you'd have a heat spreader over all this so it wouldn't matter if you got thermal paste like just in the middle but with gpus make sure you cover the entire thing 
and um, so we're gonna go for like the cross pattern so that might look like a lot but like I said you want to make sure that you're gonna cover the entire die this is non-conductive so it doesn't matter if it spreads out over like you can see there from the factory it's come spread out over anyway and that's it guys that's how you replace thermal paste on your board it's pretty much that easy so I'm gonna screw this all back together and then get it installed in the case behind me cool bye and uh, guys this is what it looks like when it's done so hard drives back in everything is just basically cable tied to this mesh panel here there's plenty of room for the 970 power going to there say so, uh, um, that Molex is powering the two fans in the top that'll let the card breathe essentially but that's it I mean there is no room in here for anything else really um, <clears throat> but yeah I'm pretty happy that I could get that five and a quarter inch bait out without having to take the angle grinder to it um, so it's just a case of closing it up and then installing some games and doing some benchmarks Hey guys, so there you go. It runs um, a lot cooler than I thought it would run, um, even with that Hyper 212 Evo in it. I still think it, I, it would be better under water. I'd be happier pushing the overclock further. I'm going to overclock it, I just haven't got around to it yet because, to be honest, I haven't done anything on the FX platform in how many years now? Like two years or something like that. Um, so yeah. It will be overclocked when I get a chance, but at the moment I'm not really that fussed. Um, harvesting the 970 from my girlfriend's machine really helped me out. Um, I spent ages looking at second-hand cards and I just thought, there's just nothing out there that's going to give me the, the kind of bang for buck that I'm looking for. Um, and then the 970 seems like a really good option, but they're just so expensive in Britain at the moment, the used parts. And so talking about benchmarks, Cinebench I did just for my own curiosity more than anything else. The single threaded performance is pretty shocking, but I didn't expect anything else. Um, although I think the multi the multi core performance was pretty good considering it's running at stock. Um, then again with superposition, you know that was okay. I'd never used that benchmark before, but I thought, um, you know, it's come out, it's modern. I'm still going to use Heaven, but I quite like Superposition. It stresses the CPU a lot. Um, and at no point did the CPU um, get throttled. Uh, the GPU get throttled by the CPU, which is good. All the way through that benchmark, the GPU was hitting 99% usage. So I was quite happy with that. And then going into games, so everything was fine. Like Rise of the Tomb Raider, I was pretty surprised that it got 75.7 overall. Um, Geothermal Valley, mm, yeah, parts of it were pretty bad, a low of 11.74, but you know, 
with it averaging out at 75.7 overall, I could live with that, and it looked fine at 1080p medium. Similarly with Metro 2033 Redux, really happy, really happy that it managed 68 FPS average. The lows again were around 13, I think, but there weren't that many dips um, at the end, which is good. Fallout 4, absolutely fine. Um, average was 59, minimum was 55 or 56, I think. So that was absolutely fine. Although I think that might be limited by my capture card, but it shouldn't be because it should, FRAP should be measuring the GPU output. So the, the, the capture device, the Elgato, should not be limiting what the graphics card is putting out. So quite happy with that. PUBG, no surprises there. I expected PUBG to absolutely wreck this system. Um, and I know it's not, I know it's not the GPU. I know the CPU is holding that back. Um, I don't play PUBG a lot. I use it mainly for benchmarking. Um, I don't understand why people like PUBG so much. Uh, in my opinion, I think you should just play Arma 3. Um, PUBG is, ba you're, you're basically paying for a mod, in my opinion. But it's really popular. A lot of people play it. That's why I put it in there. It is a lot of fun. I've had a few chicken dinners. It's good fun, but um, it's not for me longevity wise. Um, so to round it up, am I happy with this system? Um, yes, I am. It's cost me not a lot of money to build this. Um, taking away the GPU, I'm, I'm not going to put it. I, if I add the GPU price into it, um, it would probably go up to about £300. Um, so 300 and. <laughs> 25 ish dollars and then it, it starts to not look like such a good deal but because i got the cpu i got the motherboard which isn't the best motherboard but it's okay and i got the ram for free and then i just had to buy a few bits and bobs you know i'm pretty happy with this thing I, and all i'm going to be doing is playing games on it when i'm traveling i might do a little bit of editing um i'll have to wait and see about that um, I used to edit on my 6300, my FX 6300, so I'm sure editing on this would be fine. Um, 8 gigs of RAM would probably limit it a little bit, but if I'm only editing HD quality footage, it shouldn't be a problem. Thermals are fine. Um, I think the real acid test is going to be when I overclock this system, um, because there is not a lot of airflow in this case. Uh, that worries me. So if I was going to overclock it, then I would probably look at putting it under water. If I'm going to put it under water, then things like a Ryzen 5 1500 start to look really appealing. Um, if I was to build this system again, if I had the money to do this properly, it would definitely be a Ryzen 5 that was in that. It would be like a 1500. Or if I wanted a mobile editing station, I would probably put 1600 in, overclock it, and get really good performance with that 970 in it. <clears throat> but that being said, guys, um, yeah, I'm really happy. Really happy. Glad I got the project done. Um, it was starting to annoy me that I hadn't managed to complete it. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know as well the projects you've done in the past. If you've been handed a load of parts and done something with it. This is the kind of stuff I like. Um, like when I built my Jules Zeon rig, I really enjoyed doing that. I really enjoyed building this because it was a lot of back and forth trying to get things to work. Even trying to get the SATA drives to work was a pain in the ass because I had to go and download the latest chipset and the driver from AMD then I had to manually install the driver and that was a, another evening of fun which I didn't video because it would, probably wouldn't have been broadcastable it's just very frustrating but it's all working now which is great um, yeah so let me know in you know what systems have you built that have been a pain uh, what systems have you built out of parts that people probably wouldn't do anything with um, and let me know down below in the comments if you enjoyed this if you like this kind of content guys but um it's really late on a Sunday night, so I'm going to get out of here, guys, and I'll catch you again in another great tech video. Bye.